Hey, how's it going everybody? Remy Sovereign here from RemySovereign.com. Today I have a new little video that I'm going to be sharing with all of you today. And it's about clearing up a lot of the terms that are associated with spinal disc injuries. So there are a lot of common terms that are used to describe or refer to in terms of spinal disc injuries. And it can be very confusing to someone that doesn't have an understanding about the differences or similarities between these terms especially when they're diagnosed with a disc protrusion, disc bulging disc, slip disc, ruptured disc, whatever the case may be. So the primary goal for today's video and for me is to provide you with that information and to clear up what a lot of these terms mean and to describe their similarities as well as their differences in reference to spinal disc injuries. So to begin, we have to identify what are a lot of the common terms associated with spinal disc injuries or spinal disc abnormalities to begin with. So we could look to a bulging disc, which is one of the most common terms that a lot of people refer to. But also another common term you hear is herniated disc. But then there's also sequestered disc, disc protrusion, slip disc, ruptured disc, disc prolapse, disc extrusion. So as you can see here, guys, this is a pretty big list of terms and they're all commonly referred to in terms of spinal disc abnormalities or injuries. However, it can get confusing because there are a lot of terms and they all do have very similar meanings when you look at their definitions, which leads me into my next slide, looking at synonyms. So synonym is any type of word that has a very similar or the exact same meaning as another word. And it can almost be used interchangeably. So when you look at those terms, herniate, bulge, protrusion, extrusion, slip, rupture, prolapse, sequestered, they are all very similar and they could all have very similar references and meanings. So now I bolded sequester because this is one of the only terms that kind of can be identifiable on its own. And I'll kind of get into what a sequestered disc is as I go throughout this presentation and go on to a couple more slides. But if you look up just what a a bulge, the, the primary, one of the primary synonyms or synonym for a bulge is a protrusion. If you look at a prolapse, a synonym for prolapse is a slip. And then when you just refer to rupture, extrusion, herniate, all these terms can be referred to in similar context when referring to disc injuries. And I'll talk about how they can be referred to similarly, simil similarly as I go through this presentation. So firstly, what's the difference? So firstly, let's look at a herniated disc. So a herniated disc, it is a broad term that is used by many people to describe a type of injury, damage, or abnormality to a spinal disc. And it has different subcategories. So it could be nuclear herniation, disc protrusion, extrusion, sequestered. So the key thing here, guys, is a herniated disc is a very broad term used to describe uh, d different types of herniations within a disc, whether that's a contained herniation or a non-contained herniation, maybe a nuclear herniation or a sequestered disc, whatever the case may be. So it, the important thing here is to understand it's a very broad term, but it has different subcategories to describe kind of the different uh, differences with where a herniation may be occurring or how it's occurring, whether it's contained or non-contained. So herniate means when you are moving something into an abnormal position or moving through an abnormal opening. So we're going from a normal position, so taking a normal disc and then going to an abnormal position or that's a disruption within the, the nucleus, kind of maybe tearing through the annulus or whatever the case may be. So a herniated disc can be, can be and may be referred to in many contexts or it could be referred to as a bulge, protrusion, extrusion, sequestered, slipped, ruptured disc, prolapse. And when referring to a lot of these terms, as you can see, this can be very confusing because you have all these terms are referring to a herniated disc, which can make things confusing. But I'll kind of understand, I'll kind of explain in the next slide what is, what like kind of the similarities are and how these are similar and why it's important to kind of define these in terms of your own terms or 
be as specific and clear as possible when referring to these terms in order to kind of prevent any confusion from occurring. So what we see here, guys, is just a, a, di a, good, a visual diagram that I think represents it pretty good or represents uh, different kind of stages within uh, spinal disc abnormalities or spinal disc damage. So on the far left, what we got is a normal disc, a normal healthy disc. We have our annulus, so a healthy annulus. We have the outer portion of the annulus, inner portion of the annulus, and then we have our nucleus, which is the center of the disc. So moving on, we can move on to a nuclear herniation, which may also be referred to as a disc bulge in some cases. So what we see is we have the border of, so this red line here within the disc is representing the border of a normal disc. So if we go back to the normal disc on the left here, that's the normal position that it was originally in. And then as you can see, it kind of bulged out or herniated out. So we have a nuclear herniation occurring, which the nucleus now, has been disrupted or it, you know you could refer to it it has ruptured in a sense there's been disruption so as you can see I'm already using another term ruptured to describe a nuclear herniation or disc bulge here and as you can see these terms can be used very interchangeably because when we think of rupture you know something's breaking apart so you can see the nucleus is breaking through the annulus in a sense and we're getting that uh, we're starting to get problems and damage to the disc occurring. Now we have uh, just to kind of refer to the rim lesion which is just a kind of an annular tear associated on the spinal disc. I'm not going to get into detail upon that in today's video as I'll I think I'll separate that for a future video for its own self but just understand there's tears on the, the disc occurring on the annulus which can, <clears throat> which can further cause problems in terms of uh, the nucleus potentially leaking out if we have enough tears occurring and there's different types of tears that are, that are referred to which I'll talk about in a future video and you could see it more clearly on the bottom uh, picture there so now moving on to a disc protrusion so disc protrusion now here's where things can get very confusing because a disc protrusion can be the same as a disc bulge a disc protrusion or sorry so when we look at a, a disc protrusion or disc bulge the synony a synonym for a disc bulge or disc protrusion um, are these terms themselves. So when you you know if you search bulge synonym uh, protr uh, protrude protrusion or protruding is a synonym for a bulge. And essentially, all a bulge or protr a protrusion is is just you're moving outside of a normal area, or you're moving uh, in a certain you're moving something in a certain direction or moving away from a normal position. So with, with reference to a disc protrusion here, it's important to clearly state what you're defining these terms as and in what sense. So for the purpose of this kind of video and for this picture and display, a disc protrusion we could define as the new, a, a one portion or an, one portion of the nucleus kind of bulging or protruding outwards towards the annulus, towards the outer portion of the annulus. However, the key thing is, is when referring to these terms, it's important to clearly state the degree of what a protrusion is. Because protrusion and bulge can be referred to as the same thing as what I'm trying to explain here. So if the thing, the key thing I want to state is that if you're going to use a disc bulge and if you're going to use a disc protrusion as separate terms, it's important to clearly state the kind of definition or, or what you are specifically defining them as uh, for your own defini definition and reference. So just for the purpose of this video, we'll refer to as a disc protrusion uh, as a portion of the nucleus kind of expanding outwards to the outer portion of the spinal disc. So the outer portion of the annulus, whereas we'll refer to the disc balls as just a nuclear herniation where we do have disruptions within the nucleus but it's more centered to the disc itself and it's not on it's not close to the outer layers so it may only be in maybe the for instance maybe the 10th layer of the annulus whereas the disc protrusion may be being the we will can define as the 20th layer disc bulge only to the 10th layer as well we're kind of what we'll, we'll, we will define that as just for the kind of the purpose of this video just to kind of give you, give you an example moving on to a so before I, oh sorry so just to kind of explain going back to those annular tears we have tears on the discs or tears in those um, areas 
which can cause um, significant problems as you can see with the red arrows are pointing to various tears or disruptions kind of within the annulus. So when we get those tears that could further cause problems and it could cause that nucleus material to leak outwards of the spinal disc. Which I'll kind of talk about and go into more detail in a future video because I feel like that's a separate topic for its own day and it's for its own video. So moving on to the disc extrusion now. So disc extrusion, when we, when we refer to the term extruding or extruding, it's referred to as forcing something out. So this can be very similar to a protrusion or bulge as well. But uh, like I said, for the purpose of this video, we'll clearly define it as a non-contained herniation. So non-contained herniation meaning that that nucleus in the center has ripped through the whole annulus. So, it has, so it's gone through the 10th layer, the 12th layer, and it's completely, or 20th layer, and it's completely disrupted the annulus and has moved outwards. So you have a complete tear on a one side or one portion of the annulus there, which we'll refer to as a disc extrusion. So now you're forcing that nucleus material outwards. So as you can see, just by the red arrow pointing, we have that herniated nucleus moving outwards. So now sequester disc is probably the most clear term that is used or is referred to when people are using it. So when we look at the definition of sequestered, it's when something is hidden or isolated away. So we have a sequestered fragment here. So it's a hidden fragment or it's a fragment that is hidden away or it's in a different position. As you can see, it's not connected to the nucleus anymore. It's not connected to the disc and it actually has broken off and has moved into a localized region outside the disc. So sequestered is a pretty clear term when it's when referring to it. However, the other ones such as protrusion, extrusion, disc bulge, ruptured disc, uh, slip disc, and disc prolapse can be very confusing because now if we go back to just talking about a slip disc, now what is an individual defining a slip disc as? Is it just a portion of the nucleus slipping out through maybe a couple layers of the annulus or is the disc material in the center of the nucleus, is it completely slipping out as in the case of a disc extrusion here, is it completely slipping out and going completely through the annulus and now it's we have that herniated nucleus on the uh, through the, the through the it's moved through the annulus and it's on the outside of the disc per se so as you can see guys when I'm referring to a lot of these terms it can be very confusing and almost a better way to refer to them is uh, do you have a contained herniation or do you have a non-contained herniation so what I mean by that if we look to a nuclear herniation and disc protrusion those can be specifically referred to as a contained herniation because the nucleus hasn't been it hasn't uh, forced completely out of the annulus so is that a way you define it or do you go as a disc extrusion and or sorry going moving on to a disc extrusion now where we have a uh, non-contained herniation where that nucleus is now herniated to the outside of the uh, to the outside of the disc or has completely pushed through the annulus and moved through the annulus so it's a little bit easier to find it in those terms as we have do you have a contained herniation or do you have a non-contained herniation so if we were to get kind of technical just to kind of refer back to my case guys i had for no better terms a disc bulge or a disc protrusion so a contained herniation for no better terms. But the key thing here, guys, is it's just, it can be very confusing because a lot of these terms do have the very similar meanings. And when people refer to them, they can get very confused because someone may be referring to a slip disc and someone may be referring to a disc protrusion. Although they have very similar meanings, it's important to understand how these terms are defined and what that individual is defining as a, a slip disc or disc protrusion, which leads me to my last slide here and the key takeaway is that a lot of these terms can refer to describing similar stages of spinal disc damage or abnormalities, which can make very things uh, confusing when you're communicating or referring to these terms. So it's important to understand guys that these terms are very similar, but it's important also to be uh, specific as possible when defining and referring these terms. 
So understand what are you defining a disc bulge as? What are you defining a disc extrusion as? What are you defining a slip disc as? If you're going to use those terms. So be specific as possible. So is it maybe a, is it a, or is it a ruptured disc? So what is your definition of a ruptured disc? Because all these terms have very similar meanings, but if you're going to use them in different terms, clearly state how they're, it's important for individuals to kind of clearly state how they are referring to them. So is that, you know, is that bulge only, are you referring to only maybe uh, as moving through a portion of the annulus and that uh, whether that's maybe like the 10th layer or something, it has kind of moved through or ruptured through. So as you can see, I'm already using another term in the terms of ruptured to refer to a bulge. But and then if you look at a protrusion, if we were to go back, are you defining that as a type of uh, contained herniation, which is only going to the 20th layer of the annulus or to the outer portion of the annulus? So it, that's the kind of my key takeaway, guys, is that a lot of these terms are very similar can get confusing and I hope I didn't kind of confuse you more with this video and I hope it kind of provided you with information that a lot of these terms are very similar, although there may be slight differences. But uh, the key thing is guys is just to, just to understand that they are similar and that they can refer to a lot of the same things depending on how a individual clinician or uh, doctor or researcher may be defining them. So guys, that's just my key takeaway. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and were able to learn something uh, or were able to understand and I hope I was able to clarify kind of uh, what a lot of these common terms, why they're used and kind of how they're used and their similarities. So guys, now if you guys enjoyed this, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and also if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to subscribe especially if you want to see more spinal disc injury or spinal kind of disc injury tips and more kind of education associated around the spinal disc itself. And uh, also if you guys have any questions or any types of videos or specific videos you would like to see, please put those in the comments below if there's any kind of type of video you want me to do. Um, and that's it guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I wish you guys all the best and a successful and productive day. Take care.